Good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning again. We are in August. Today is August 8th, and it's a hot one here in the Midwest. It's hot and humid outside. Uh, if I jumped in a pool, I think I would be only marginally more wet than just walking outside. <sighs> it's crazy, but let's not dwell on that. My name is Melissa Epkin, and I'm the pastor at the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm also the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries. This is for those who are interested in growing their spiritual health and awareness. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast that encourages people to lean into those difficult situations and experiences in life so that they can overcome them. We share stories of people who have done that so that you can be inspired in your own life. Today, I want to talk about a fulfilling life. I mean, golly, that's something we all want, right? But we don't spend a lot of time thinking about what it takes to have a, fulfill, a fulfilled life. I do speak for a living, by the way. And how to put it into action in our own lives so that it can come about. A lot of times we stumble onto things that are fulfilling, but today I wanna to talk about small things we can do that cost zero money that will help us have a fulfilling life. So let's get started. First, gratitude. Gratitude is amazing. It's one of those things that can transform your whole thought process, your mindset, and how you move throughout this life. So each day, take some time for gratitude, whether it's in the morning when you wake up to set your mind set for the day, or whether it's in the evening when you are coming into that routine that you have before bedtime, take some time for gratitude. Come up with three things throughout the day that you're grateful for. You can find three things. Number two, Live with love. And this seems so obvious, and usually the most things are. They're simple, not always easy, but live with love. Those things that give you joy, the people that you love, focus on the love that you have in your life, and then prioritize that. Number three, live with purpose. Purpose is something that might change throughout your life. For some folks, they know it from the time they're a teenager. Others, we might find it when we're 53, and it might change as you go throughout life. But find what your purpose is right now. What's the one thing that motivates you? Well, I don't like that word motivates. What's the thing that inspires you to make a difference in this life? Focus on that and prioritize it for your life. And then four, comparisons. No more. No more comparisons. I don't care what the other person does. I don't care what they have. I don't care what they make. Stop with the comparisons. If you must make a comparison, compare to yourself yesterday. Com just stop with the comparisons. Focus on what makes you happy and whole and complete. What everybody else is doing doesn't matter. Number five. You know, I can get a little preachy on this one but forgiveness. Forgiveness is the one thing that will transform your life more quickly and more deeply than anything else in this world. Be a forgiving person. Give and receive forgiveness. It's not about the other person. It's about yourself. Don't confuse forgiveness with reconciliation. Reconciliation is something that may or may not happen after forgiveness, but forgiveness is releasing that negative emotion that is attached to a past event. Do that. Number six, relationships are better than possessions, by far. When we die, we're not taking it with us. We're not taking relationships with us really either when we die, although we can get in a big theological conversation about that one. But what I would like to say is what we leave behind matters. All the stuff we collect, people are going to sell those or throw them in a dumpster. But the relationships that we have is our legacy to this life for generations. 
Cultivate the relationships. Stop worrying about the stuff. Hold yourself accountable. What you do and say matters in this life. It comes with consequences. It builds people up or it tears them down. So be accountable for the things you do and the things you say, as well as for the things you don't do and the things you don't say. Number eight, give back. This is, gosh, this is such a good therapeutic tool, but it's also so beneficial to ourselves and to other folks. Obviously, when you give back, it helps other people, but it also does something pretty cool inside yourself too. It can help you to heal from a multitude of things that might be troubling you, but give back. It's just a good policy. It will make you feel amazing about yourself and you will have a lot of, a lot of good feelings, a lot of good relationships. It'll broaden your perspective and awareness in life. It's just an amazing thing to do. Number nine, let go of the hate and the anger. Yeah, somebody cut you off in traffic. So what? Let it go. You're still moving. You're still going to your destination. Don't focus on the hate and the anger. Yeah, a politician is doing what politicians do. What are you going to do? Let them be who they are. Let go of the hate. Let go of the anger. Focus on the purpose and the people in your life. Those are your real priorities anyway. And finally, spend time with life-giving people. Spend time with those folks who build you up, who help you to become a better version of yourself. Spend time with people who will ask you difficult questions that will help you to look deeply within yourself and emerge a stronger, wiser, and better equipped in this life. Spend time with the people who you love, who give you purpose, who help you to give back, who help you to be grateful and forgiving. Spend time with the people in this life who give not only to you, but to others that they meet. Those people are amazing and you can never have too many of them in your life. This was a really fast run through. Hey, my friend Paul's watching. Hey, Paul. So spend time with these things. They don't cost you a penny. Any of these things you can do. You don't have to tackle all 10. Pick one, pick two, and start incorporating them into your daily routine and see how your life begins to become something that you look forward to. How nice would it be every morning when you wake up to not be able to stay in bed, but ready to jump out of bed because you cannot wait to get into this life that you've created. That is my wish for you and my hope for you. So I hope that something in here is meaningful for you, that it will help you to find some fulfillment in your life. Again, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Eliopolis and the Nyanic Christian Churches, the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministry, and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. If you would like to connect, I'm doing a workshop soon on how to manage and understand anxiety and how to manage it in your life. So hit the link that should be showing. If not, I'll post it. But hit that link and you can sign up for that. And if you'd like to connect, reach out. That's all for now, friends. Be well.